This is an overview of mechanical energy balances. Now we've covered energy balances in the past, but uh, we're going to just cover a simple case where there's no temperature change or the internal energy equals zero, delta internal energy is uh, no change, and no chemical reaction as well. So no temperature change, no chemical reaction. We can also say that the enthalpy is about zero. But we just have velocity, pressure, and friction are going to be important. And then our energy equation reduces to uh, this form. So let me just go over each one. This is a pressure change. Um, this is a velocity change. And you see the square there. So as there's a velocity change. Uh, you got to make sure you, you include the square and also divide by 2. And then we also have our height change and then any loss due to friction. And then this is shaft work. Now this is done by the fluid. Uh, WS is done by the fluid, but we've normalized everything by the mass flow rate. Okay, so this is uh, the mechanical energy balance um, with just considering velocity, pressure, elevation, friction, um, those more types of mechanical um, effects. Okay, so um, we have our mechanical energy balance right here. And uh, what we can do is say if the friction equals zero, and the shaft work equals zero, then it actually reduces down to Bernoulli's equation. Okay, so this is going to be equal to zero. If I have, um, you know, let's say a pipe um, with a slight elevation change, and uh, then I could I could put 0.1 and 0.2, and uh, just set each of those. Okay, so this one will be. Um, put point 0.1 and point 0.2 in there, and then the deltas are going to be 1 and 2. Okay, so I can write those out once I've selected my points. Um, okay, so let's just go over a, a simple example with this. Okay, so we have, um, let's say instead of these two points, um, we have something that actually changes in, okay, so I'm going to do pipe diameter change. Okay, and this is like a venturi meter, okay, where you have a wider cross-sectional area here. I'm going to put this as my point 0.1, and then this as point 0.2. Okay, so um, there's going to be no shaft work. I don't have a turbine or a pump in here. Um, and so let's just go ahead and, and write out uh, my equations. Also, um, one other thing is I have no elevation change. So delta Z equals zero. Okay, so that's going to help me cancel out um, you know, this term right there. Okay, so um, let's say I have uh, a fluid flowing uh, this way. This is going to be mass flow rate one, mass flow rate two. At steady state, those two are going to be those two are going to be equal. So first of all, what I need to do is, is calculate um, a velocity at both locations. Now let's say I'm given uh, what mass flow rate one is, and um, I calculate the, the velocity. Um, and then I want to be able to calculate, um, let's say, pressure two. So I know, let's say, pressure one, or I, I maybe want a difference between these two pressures. Um, so let's go ahead and do let's go ahead and do that calculation. So here I had zero elevation change. Here's my pressure change, and all I need to do is get a, a velocity change. So um, if the mass flow rate is constant, okay, then that means that rho one a one u one equals rho two a two u two. Okay, let's just say um, the densities are going to be equal, uh, incompressible, incompressible fluid. Okay, and then uh, I just have that U2 equals U1 times A1 divided by A2. And then I know that uh, the cross-sectional area A1 is just going to be pi D1 squared divided by 4. And the cross-sectional area 2 is going to be pi d2 squared divided by 4. So I can plug those in, and uh, then I get a correlation 
for u. So it's just going to be u2 equals u1 times d1 over d2 squared. Okay, so there's uh, the change in velocity between uh, point 0.1 and point 0.2. Now let's, um, let's just go ahead and continue this now. Let's go ahead and plug in u2 and u1 into my correlation. Um, let's say I just know u1, um, and then I rearrange and solve for p2. So therefore, p2 is going to be p1 minus rho over 2 times u1 squared times d1 over d2 to the fourth minus 1. Okay, so I can see that as I, as I increase, um, let me put another parenthesis around this right here. Um, as I decrease in diameter, then my pressure is going to go down. Okay, so I have, this is going to be negative right here. My pressure 2 is going to be less than pressure 1. Okay, so um, this would be like a venturi meter uh, to be able to calculate uh, flow rate. Um, you could uh, do that by calculating the, the pressure difference. Sometimes they put a manometer here in the old times. Okay, so a manometer and maybe a difference in uh, Okay, something like that, and then you can get a, uh, a change uh, in the fluid height can correlate to change in the pressure and be able to calculate a, uh, a flow rate through that system. Okay, so uh, let's go on to just a couple uh, other useful relationships. Here's a volumetric flow. A v dot is going to be the velocity times the area. So just looking at the units, that's meters cubed per second times meters per second, um, and, and that's meters per second times meters squared to give you meters cubed per second. Okay, and then mass flow rate is going to be density times the area times the velocity. Okay, and that's going to be kilograms, kilograms per second. Okay, so let's go over um, this example. We're going to pump water uh, from a lake to a ranger station on the side of a mountain. Um, Okay, so the flow rate has got to be 95 gallons per minute. And uh, actually, let me go over to different applications. It's a little easier to ride on. Okay, um, this is going to be 95 gallons per minute. Okay, coming up here. And I'll just put 0.2 right here, the velocity uh, coming out. And uh, right here is going to be 0.1. Okay, right at the lake. Um, so this is going to be 95 gallons per minute, and then I need to maybe get a U2 value um, of velocity um, going through there. So let's, let's go ahead and read on and, and just see if we can get um, more information. So 95 gallons per minute, that's my volumetric uh, flow rate. And the flow channel, channel is a standard one inch okay, diameter pipe, inner diameter. Okay, so that's going to be uh, one inch, which is, you know, that's going to be 1.049 inches, in fact. Okay, so a pump capable, this pump right here, uh, that's eight horsepower pump, um, is available. The friction loss, okay, and they give us some units there, equals 0 0.041 times L. Now, L is not liters, L is in uh, feet. It's the length of the pipe. So calculate the maximum elevation change, Z, um, of the ranger station above the lake if the pipe rises at an angle of 30 degrees. Okay, so just um, the trigonometry application here. Um, let's just go ahead and re review that. We have sine of 30 degrees. Okay, that's going to equal 0 0.5. That equals uh, Z divided by L. So in that case, um, L is going to be equal to 2 times Z. Okay, so uh, we, we have uh, this equation for, for elevation change. Okay, now let's go ahead and just write out our um, mechanical energy balance. Okay, so that's going to be delta P over rho 
plus delta u squared, that's my change in velocity squared, plus g times the elevation change, z, plus my friction loss equals the negative shaft work divided by the mass flow rate. Okay, so um, friction loss, okay, so I have my L right here. The friction loss is going to be 0 0.041, okay, times L. And that is going to be in foot uh, pound force per pound mass. Okay, so I have my, my friction loss that I can use right here. Um, my z, I'll just start at an elevation of, I'll just say the zero, um, and then I'm going to calculate up from there. Um, I have a, a difference in my velocities as well. I'll just assume that u1, you know, the velocity of the water in the lake is going to be zero, um, and then we're going to calculate it um, with the velocity of, of course, by 95 gallons per minute flowing through a one inch pipe here at the top. Okay. Um, and then um, pressure change, pressure change. So if I do it when it comes out of this pipe, but the velocity is still high, then I have no uh, pressure change between these two. Okay, um, so I just am left with these uh, four terms right here. So let's go ahead and calculate, first of all, just our U2 value. Okay, so U2 is, uh, is going to be equal to now, if you remember from the um, the velocity, or sorry, the volumetric flow rate equals u times a. So if I can take my volumetric flow rate divided by my cross-sectional area, then I can get my u2 value. So the volumetric flow rate is going to be 95 gallons per minute. Okay, and then uh, there are about seven and a half. Okay, gallons per foot cubed. And then I just need to get it into seconds as well. So there are 60 seconds per minute. Okay, and that's going to be equal to 0 0.212 feet cubed per second. Okay, now let's go ahead and divide that by the cross-sectional area. So that's going to be pi d squared over 4. And if I just convert that into feet, that's going to be 6 times 10 to the minus 3 uh, feet squared. Okay, so my flow rate then is going to be 35.3 feet per second. Okay, so that's my, um, this is my velocity, my velocity, not flow rate, uh, velocity through the pipe at U2. Okay, so we need that information um, right down here. So, um, Let's see, let's go ahead and also get the mass flow rate because we need that as well. Now that we have, uh, we have the volumetric flow rate, we, we need the mass flow rate as well. That's just going to be rho times A times U2. Okay, and that's going to be uh, 62.4 pound mass per foot cubed, okay, for water. And then we have uh, 6 times 10 to the minus 3 feet uh, squared, that's the cross-sectional area, and then I have my 35.2 uh, feet per second. Okay, so that gives me a total mass flow rate of 13.2 pound mass per second. Okay, so now I have um, velocities, volumetric flows, mass flow rates. I think I probably have everything now uh, to be able to plug in uh, to this equation. Okay, so let's just go ahead and start with this, this first one. We had 35.3, and that was feet per second. Okay, and put a 2 down here, but we need to square this. And then we also had the minus u1, but that was 0. Um, then let's go ahead and do the, um, okay, the for our elevation change. Um, okay, so we have our gravitational constant. 32.2 foot feet per second squared uh, times our z value. Okay, and then we're going to add, um, let's go ahead and add our friction term. Okay, so that's going to be 2 um, times 
uh, 0 0.041 okay because I had the uh, let's see if I can find that right here this equation okay and then times Z so that is our length of pipe is 2 times Z times our frictional coefficient which was 0 0.041 um, and then I need to also do um, I also have a unit conversion issue here as well so that was in foot pound force per pound mass. Okay, then I'm going to multiply it to convert pound mass to pound force. 32.2 um, foot pound mass over pound force second squared. Okay, so this is just the unit conversion, it's the GC value. Okay, and then this is going to be equal to the negative 8 horsepower times 13.2 pound mass per second okay and then let me just convert horsepower into um, something that's it's foot pound force per second okay so that's going to be 0 0.7376 foot pound force per second and then divided by 1.34 times 10 to the minus 3 uh, horsepower Okay, so that's going to cancel, just get it into the units that uh, we need it. Okay, and then what I can do is just go ahead and solve for Z now. Everything else is given, um, and I'm in consistent units, and so Z is going to equal 290 feet. Okay, so we can um, calculate, we calculated that it uh, allowed us to go up to 290 feet. Okay, 290 foot elevation change with a uh, with this pump now if you had a larger diameter uh, pipe you may have less friction loss and so you could maybe go um, to a higher elevation but um, the things that are counteracting this pump are are what's on this right hand side it was a change in velocity it's the change in elevation and then also the uh, friction losses so it's going to be um, the, the pressure difference is going to be generated here and then it's going to be um, uh, put into raising the water to a higher elevation and uh, accelerating the water and then also overcoming any frictional losses. Okay, so that, um, that concludes this example. Let me just come back, um, come back here and just to review, we had um, this mechanical energy balance, okay, with pressure, velocity, height, friction, and shaft work. Um, and then uh, we saw that we were able to simplify it down to Bernoulli's equation that you may already be familiar with, and just reviewed a couple different um, correlations here just to help us in deriving our problem. So that concludes this on the mechanical energy balance. Um, and uh, we're going to continue uh, in future lectures with uh, combustion systems where there's reaction or separation happening as well.